everybody, thanks for joining me today. Today I'll be demonstrating how to wire wrap hoops with this fun crisscross pattern. I'm using 40 millimeter gold hoops, three millimeter faucetted peridot stone, and 26 gauge copper wire from Artistic Wire Brand. Let's get started. To start off with, I'm taking my hoop and a few feet of the 26 gauge wire, and I'm going to start wire wrapping at the top of the hoop. And I'm going to go around a few times to get it nice and snug on the hoop as much as possible to hold it on there. Side note here, you may have to smooth out your wire a few times with nylon pliers if it's been coiled for a while so it cooperates easier. The next thing you want to do is you want to have enough stones on your wire to go around the circumference of your hoop. For this particular design, I'm going to use 28 of the three millimeter stones and you just add them to the wire until you think you have enough to go around the hoop and you can stop and double check as you're going around. And so you wanna fill up your wire with enough to go around the hoop and I'll do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have enough stones going around my hoop and I'm not filling it 100% because as we go back over the hoop and in between the stones, you will need space to wire up. So I'm going to push that up there a little bit leave about a half inch of space on the wire. This will be used as we move the stones around and I'm going to loosely go around the top of the hoop over here. And I'm just gonna wire wrap it a few times. This will hold it onto the hoop. Okay, so the first step is to move the stone down towards your coil and we're going to take the wire, kind of push it down into place there a little bit and go over the hoop and the wire and in front of the stone. The first stone sometimes is a little awkward because you're trying to get everything into place, but after that, it's a little bit easier. You wanna pull your wire nice and tight and flush so it has a little bit of a crisscross pattern for me, but it will also hold everything into place. And you wanna slide your next stone down and then repeat with your wire going over the wire that you had placed there the first time, the hoop, and you want to kind of pinch everything down and also wire up nice and tight and in front of the stone. And slide your next stone and do the same thing, going over the wire that's here, your hoop, and in front of the stone. And so you just repeat the same pattern of taking your wire and looping it over the hoop and everything and in front of the stone and you just go all the way around your hoop until you finished with the last stone. And now you can start to see a fun pattern start to emerge of your first crisscross pattern. And this is why you need the extra gap in the wire because as you move along, you'll use that space up as you're moving the stones around. And if you find that when you get to the end, you need to have more space, you can undo the loop here, let the wire off, remove a stone, and then just continue wire wrapping around and then reattach that wire to the hoop. That way, if you don't have enough room left over, if you remove a stone, you have a little bit of give you can work with. And if they loosen up at all, towards this point, they should be nice and tight. But if they're a little loose back here, you can go back and kind of pinch it a little bit tighter. But at this point, my wire wrapping is nice and tight. The stones are very sandwiched in together and there's not a lot of movement as the previous wire wrapping is holding everything into place nice and snugly. So you just keep going around and I'm going to finish this first row and I'll be right back. For an example of if you need more space to wire wrap, I've unlooped the end of the hoop here and I just kind of have it pointed up and you can take your wire and then you can continue wire wrapping around the stones on the hoop. And it gives you a little bit more space in between each stone that maybe you need because you don't have enough wire to work with. So if you're using a larger stone, for example, you might need an inch of wire at the start for the space as you're wire wrapping around. This is a little bit of a tricky wire wrapping pattern. So you will be using a lot of wire. And again, you just keep going around as you... 
So I finished wire wrapping all the stones and now I'm going to re-wire wrap this onto the hoop and trim off excess wire. And then I'm going to finish wire wrapping this strand of beads I just finished. So next you wanna rotate your hoop over and we're going to start wire wrapping back over the stones in the opposite pattern of what we just did. So this way we're going to go back over this direction in between each stone and then go around the hoop all the way around. Now, if it doesn't look like you have enough wire, like this isn't enough, you can wire wrap it onto the hoop and then just cut this part off, for example, and add new wire and wire wrap it onto there. You just want to make sure whatever wire you have that it goes with the right direction. So if I put the wire on this end, for example, I would have to flip it back over so it has the opposite pattern. So you wanna make sure that whatever you're doing, it's the right side up and it's the opposite pattern of what you just did that will form the crisscross pattern. So I'm going to add some more wire here on the ends. And you do go through probably five feet of wire on this project. Ideally, you want to do this project with one long piece of wire and the wire will go across first, back around and back over again. But that is a lot of wire for the 26 gauge. Sometimes if it's too long, it will not on itself, kind of like if you're seed bead weaving. So sometimes I do this with two different pieces of wire. Okay, so I've reattached the new wire to the end of my hoop, and now I'm going to go back over each stone, and a crisscross pattern will start to form. So this time I'm going over this way, which is the opposite direction of the previous wire I did. And again, you just go back and forth in between each stone. So as I go around, you can see this awesome pattern start to develop. It's a really fun crisscross pattern. And then you just keep going back around the hoop. See when the wire is really long, it just wants to flop all over the place. So you just keep going around each stone and you want to pull nice and tight so that way the wire holds firm to the frame and doesn't have any large gaps or anything like that. And as you're going to, these stones are really nice, like they don't crack fairly easy, but if you're using probably a different kind of stone, you might not want to pull down too hard because it could crack the stone and make it break. So it depends probably on what you're using. But for this part, you just keep going around with your wire and pull tight enough to where it stays, but I'm not harming the stone. And we're almost finished. And then once you reach the end, you go over the last stone and just wire wrap onto the hoop a few times. You can go over the previous wire, which will help kind of lock it down on the hoop too. And then cut off your excess wire and pinch closed. And you're finished. So you do that twice and then you have a pair of earrings. Thanks for joining me today. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you on the next video. Feel free to give me a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and I'm on Pinterest and TikTok. And if you have any questions, feel free to give me an email or send me a message on one of my social platforms and give me a like and a follow. Thanks. Have a great day.